Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Tonight Show here in Studio 6A. <laughs> you have a little trouble? Got caught. <laughs> I was watching you try to play drums. I take it off. <laughs> uh, let's get to the news and jokes. Well, guys, with Election Day less than a week away, the White House Science Office just put out an interesting list of President Trump's accomplishments. Listen to this. The White House Science Policy Office lists ending the pandemic as one of what it calls the top accomplishments of the president's first term. <laughs> what? That's like the Tampa Bay Rays listing their biggest accomplishment as 2020 World Series champions. <laughs> Seriously, right now, the coronavirus is like ending the pandemic. Thanks to you, we just got picked up for three more seasons. <laughs> Keep in mind, though, the White House Science Office is just Eric and Don Jr. wearing Bill Nye Halloween costumes. <laughs> When I think of the White House Science Office, I picture a bunch of monkeys in lab coats running around with their fingers stuck in test tubes like thrown papers. <laughs> I was pretty surprised to find out the Trump White House has a science office. It's like finding out the Bachelorette has a science office. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, lying on his resume is one of the most relatable things Trump's ever done. <laughs> no, I don't know how to use Excel. Uh, Trump ended the pandemic. Now everyone's just living in their parents' basement for fun. <laughs> what an incredible claim. Someone hasn't been that far off since... Uh... The Roots drummer, Amir Thompson, is better known by what name? Fred Flintstone. No. <laughs> I knew it. Flintstone, oh my God. <laughs> I mean, why even guess? Why, yeah. even, why even guess? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Did your phone just like explode? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> Gooby Doo! <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that was the funniest thing. Oh my God. <laughs> Well, uh, last night, Trump held a rally in Omaha, Nebraska, where it was a little chilly outside. Uh, check out what he said. Is there any place you would rather be than a Trump rally on about a 10-degree evening? 10 degree. It was so cold in Nebraska, Trump almost turned into a creamsicle. <laughs> I don't think Trump was prepared for the weather. When he stepped outside, he was like, why was I told this was a hot spot? Yep, everyone was freezing. Trump supporters were like, if only there was some way to keep our faces warm. <laughs> uh, you could tell Trump was cold. At one point, he started speaking in front of the engines on Air Force One. <laughs> Build more wall. We need more wall. Yep, Trump said it was 10 degrees, which is still 10 more degrees than the scientists in the White House Science Office have. <laughs> Take it, yeah. Take it, it's all right, yeah, that was a good one. That's a, a little math, you do the math and that's not bad, you know. Uh, uh, Fred Flintstone. <laughs> Does he look like hopeful too? Like it might be Fred Flintstone? Why does he say with such conviction and authority? <laughs> yeah, like, I, like, but I just want to see what does her face look like after she says like is like maybe or is it like I'm just gonna say Fred Flintstone like her buddies made her do it at it. home like I you think, say Fred Flintstone I'll give you five bucks. No, I think her face is like I killed it like. Psh. What? Can we see it again, uh, Dave? Uh, just no. Please, Dave. Fred Flintstone. No. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it was. It was hopeful. It was hopeful. It was, it hopeful. was hopeful, yeah. <laughs> it was like when you roll that, bowl, that bowling ball down the alley, you know it's going to the gut of it, just like, hey, maybe 
I got one? Yeah. Maybe I got one? Uh, after his speech, Trump quickly left uh, Nebraska on Air Force One, but hundreds of his supporters were left stranded for hours in the frigid cold because their buses didn't show up. Yep, some people were actually treated for hypothermia. That's how bad it's getting for Trump. Even his supporters are turning blue. <laughs> <laughs> Before visiting Nebraska, Trump held a rally in Michigan. At one point, he addressed the women in the crowd, and his comments are getting a lot of attention. Listen to what he said. I'm also getting your husbands. They want to get back to work, right? They want to get back to work. We're getting your husbands back to work, and everybody wants it. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty shocking, because before this, Trump's been such a feminist. <laughs> Next, Trump tried winning the female vote by claiming he'd make ironing boards great again. I guess that comment explains why his campaign handed out pins that said, Trump, Pence, 1952. <laughs> Some news from overseas. With coronavirus cases rising, Russia is putting a new safety protocol in place. Watch this. Russia is introducing a national mask mandate. People in this country are going to have to wear masks when they're in public spaces, on public transports, in parking lots, and inside elevators. It's too bad. Now we won't be able to see all those famous Russian smiles. Hey, I want to say congrats to the L.A. Dodgers who won the World Series last night. Here's the final out of the season. Dave Roberts. That point strike three. Dodgers have won it all in 2020. Yeah, people in L.A. looked absolutely thrilled, and this time it wasn't just because of the Botox. <laughs> oh, we lost. Meanwhile, when he heard the Dodgers won, Joe Biden immediately congratulated the people of Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> Some entertainment news last night was an all-new episode of The Bachelorette. I love that show. It became pretty clear that Claire's favorite guy is Dale. Check out what she did in some scenes. Weird. Dale's pants. I mean, they smell like it. Let me see. <laughs> Let's see what size they are. What, 46? Oh, my God. Oh, what does that even mean? Oh, I don't wow. know man sizes. All night, I was like this. I was sleeping, and I was like... <laughs> ah, yes. It's the classic love story. Boy meets girl, girl sniffs boy's pants. <laughs> Who would have guessed naked dodgeball would be the second most embarrassing scene in The Bachelorette? <laughs> The mood really changed when a camera guy walked in and said, Oh, good, you found my pants. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta give them back to Dale. Finally, Halloween is on Saturday, everyone, and it's no surprise that political costumes are super popular this year. People are dressing as absentee ballots, the Mike Pence fly, all sorts of things. But if you still haven't picked out your costume and need help, here with a few suggestions is our Tonight Show Halloween correspondent, Julio Torres! Hi, hi, hello, and boo. <laughs> Good to see you, Julio. Your, ha your hair looks different. Well, I mean, yeah, I usually dye it, but there's simply no time for nonsense in 2020. Uh, so, okay, here are some political costume ideas. Uh, you could go as the traumatized hotel bed under Rudy Giuliani's Borat cameo. Oh. <laughs> that, that feels maybe too specific. What, what about, like, a mailbox or, or Joe Biden's aviators? Or... Okay, sure, sure, sure. Or... A Melania Christmas music box that when you open it, you hear her saying, Who gives a f about Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> or uh, you can go as fracking. Uh, just put on a feathered boa and diamond rings and have both parties be obsessed with you, bringing you champagne and kissing your hands. <laughs> or uh, you can be an attention starved, undecided voter, being like, Wait, no, keep talking to me. I'm still thinking. Come back. <laughs> or. Uh, a monster that makes absolutely no sense. It has wings, a tentacle arm, glasses, a mermaid tail, and it's like, oh, me? I'm the Electoral College. <laughs> Julio, I, I don't... Uh... No, Jimmy, no. <laughs> you can also go as a board game by Mitch McConnell called Don't Let Him Vote. 
hours of fun redrawing maps, tossing out little mailboxes, and moving polling places away from poor neighborhoods. What, what, what about something recognizable and, and relatable? L like in politics? Yeah. OK, got it. Uh, you could be a self-help book for Trump supporters called Honey, He Doesn't Care About You. <laughs> It's like, sweetie, you constantly have to defend his behavior. Your life is worse because of him, and he tells you that you can do any better. He doesn't love you. He needs you, and that's very different. <laughs> or you can be a men's body spray for Latino Trump supporters called Ay, pobrecito. <laughs> or you can go as any minority Trump supporter, AKA a bunch of hens supporting a weasel. Hey, uh, Julio, Julio. <laughs> Maybe too many Trump-inspired costumes here. Okay, wait, but, but one more. How about a recurring dream that Tiffany Trump has? In it, she's one of Ivanka's high heels, and she's happy because she gets to see a whole Ivanka day. But then she wonders, wait, if I'm a shoe and I'm alive, is the other shoe also alive? <laughs> so she looks over and she sees that the other shoe is not alive, and she gets real freaked out and wakes up. But, okay, if you don't want to go with something with Trump in the title, you could go as Jack and Titanic. All right, now, now, we're, now we're talking, but the, what's political about... Uh... Well, uh, Jack is a metaphor for Bernie, <laughs> and Rose is the Bernie supporter watching the love of her life slip away and sink into the bottom of the ocean when he lost the nomination. But she thinks, well, at least I have a rickety old door keeping me afloat, and his name is Joe Biden. <laughs> Uh, in, in this scenario, uh, uh, Trump isn't the iceberg. Trump is COVID. The boat sank because of too much COVID. <laughs> or lastly, to keep it simple, you can just be a ballot getting filled out that's like, ooh, out, ooh, out. Okay. <laughs> Julio Torres, everybody, that's from Julio. We have a great show, everyone. Give it up for the roots, please. Great show for you tonight. He stars in the new Netflix animated movie, Over the Moon. Ken Jong is here. He's always fun. Plus, his new book, Trust, America's Best Chance, is available now. Mayor Pete Buttigieg is here. And we got great music from Sam Hunt, everyone. Yeah. Hey, I want to say, everyone, uh, yesterday my, my new book came out, uh, Five More Sleeps Till Christmas. I'm very excited. Big day for me. But we also released a special edition with Target that includes a letter to Santa that kids can fill out themselves. It's cute. And we're going to do something cool right now. If you have your phone with you, open up your camera and aim it at the code on the screen. This is the, this is the future. This is it. Look at this. There you go. That's it. Just aim it at there, I think. Am I aiming it the right way? Yeah. And that's going to take you to... Yeah. Yeah. It worked? You did it? Yeah. It took me to Target. Wow. How does it feel? I mean, amazing. I guess my job here is done. No, 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 Thank you. There's more to the show. We have a whole show. Thank you for picking up the book, and thank you to Target for being a great partner. That was cool, right? The future right there, man. I love new stuff. Uh, I said, and it's on.